Okay, uh, well, tell me when you're ready. Okay. Welcome to our trip to Iowa. Uh, two uh, items for you at the top. One, uh, you may have seen this, but we put out a the President's call with um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the United Kingdom uh, and about his recent, Minister's recent visit to Ukraine. Uh, in the readout, just to highlight a few points from their commitment to continue providing security and humanitarian to Ukraine in the face of ongoing atrocities by Russia. They also welcome cooperation with allies and partners to impose severe costs for its unprovoked and unjustified war. Also wanted to highlight a uh, part of the reason, a big part of the reason we're going to Iowa today. Uh, today the president is announcing, sorry, dramatic, um, new steps uh, to achieve uh, the goal of, um, uh, of reducing of building real energy independence in the long term by reducing our reliance on fossil fuels, fuel supplies, offering more choices, and reducing gasoline prices for America. And of course, doing that on a day where we've uh, seen that energy is about 70% of the CPA, CPI uh, data, we know we need to do everything possible to cost for the American people. He's going to announce that the EPA administrator is planning to allow E gasoline, gasoline that uses a 15% ethanol blend to be sold this summer, step in expanding Americans' access to affordable fuel supply and bringing relief to Americans suffering Putin's price hike at the pump. To make e summer, the EPA is planning to issue a national emergency waiver. Without this action, E15 in most of the country from June 1st to September 15th, and the EPA plans to take final action to Emergency wa waiver closer to June 1st. E15 offered at 2,300 gas stations in the country, many of them in the Midwest, where it can serve as an important and more affordable source of fuel. Uh, E15 can save a family 10 cents per gallon on average, and many stores sell E15 at an even discount. With that, so uh, is, the, is the United States participating in an investigation? Whether chemical weapons were used in Mariupol? Nothing to confirm at this time. Of course, we are going to, in every way we can, uh, to getting to, um, but we don't have anyone on the ground as a part of that at this time, as you well know, so I don't have any updates. Did, did you see the comments from President Putin out in Eastern um, Russia, in, in which he seemed to be very defensive and, and said the military will continue? seen those comments, but that is certainly in line with our expectations um, and what we've seen um, the last several days, which is uh, not a uh, total withdrawal. And while we can certainly applaud the Ukrainians for their bravery and courage in essentially winning the Battle of Kiev, we, we know that uh, the brutality and intention of uh, taking over military of Ukraine, parts of the country, a sovereign country, uh, like that to continue. Uh, Seventy percent of the the CPI increase was gasoline related. We saw prices, housing, manning, airfare, food, uh, you know, that sorts of things. I, I'm just wondering, if this report has the uh, the way that inflation isn't being embedded into the economy going forward. Uh, projections from the Federal Reserve and other outside economists continue inflation will moderate by year end. Uh, but we are not going to wait for that. The reasons uh, that the president is going to continue to take steps, uh, one step today, uh, which is to uh, lower of gasoline by uh, by uh, by announcing the EPA waiver so that E15 can 2,300 gas stations across the country. But He's obviously taken steps to release. Uh, these are all areas where the president has proposed a plan to reduce costs and a reminder of the importance of moving forward with that. On the, on the fuel waivers, the EPA's own guidance says these waivers aren't supposed to be used um, for relieving high gas prices. Uh, some critics are also pointing to the fact that you're declaring an emergency in June 
sitting in April right now. Can you kind of talk through why we're taking some unprecedented steps or, or using some uh, unprecedented justifications waiver? Well, we've seen um, gas go up anywhere from 80 cents to a dollar uh, since uh, the since President Putin invaded Ukraine, uh, and that has certainly had a significant impact on the pocketbooks of Americans across the country. And so uh, there are a range of reasons to take this step, um, and of course, the EP taking the step. But certainly, the fact that right now, without this step, 20 stations would essentially have a cover over the E15 uh, gas pumps, not allowing uh, people to utilize uh, gas that is less expensive, and not allowing additional supply to get into the marketplace. So, at where obviously we have foreign dictator invading another country, we want to give ourselves a day and also do whatever we can to reduce costs for the American people. And you mentioned the Federal Reserve. There's been some reporting, Michael Barr is a, a leading candidate, the nomination that Sarah Blue had before. Uh, can you confirm whether or not that's true in terms of if he's also kind of give a sense of timeline for when you make that announcement? to confirm uh, and no guidance to offer uh, other than to that the president has every intention of nominating an eminently qualified uh, to fill this important role on the Federal Reserve. In Ukraine, there, there seems to be um, a new offensive in the Russia's mounting towards eastern uh, Ukraine specifically. You have a sense of uh, uh, well, what you expect to, to happen what you're worried about, what you're looking at in terms of that situation. On the ground, and I know my colleagues at the Department of Defense did back well, but um, all indications uh, are that Russia will seek to overwhelm Ukrainian forces in that region. We expect Russia will continue to launch air and missile strikes across the rest of the country to cause military and economic damage, to cause terror, because Russia's goal in the end is to weaken as much as possible. We also expect that this stage of the conflict could last a long time. Uh, we should have no illusions that Russia will adjust tactics. So, of course, what the focus is on is continuing to uh, provide uh, a range of security assistance. We essentially look at and review requests made by Ukrainian leaders. They had a call with um, our uh, uh, chiefs and our national security advisor, a two hour call where they went through items uh, on the list. Um, and I think this. Oh, this was also provided by the department, but let me reiterate, uh, we're also, uh, as we're looking to continue to expedite delivery, we've, we've committed on $1.7 billion, as you all know, we're working to provide the Ukrainians with our systems that they have recently requested in conversations between our governments, and we're working to provide them with artillery from U.S. stocks, but to facilitate from other allies and partners as well, as we did with the S-300 and the backfill of the Patriot battery system. It's Again, that some of those additional, some of that additional military aid might need uh, training from Western. Do you have any sense of how that's going to work? Where that training would happen? Involved? That is uh, what we're discussing and still working through. Jen, I want to ask about the subway, the subway attack in New York. What can you tell us about what the White House's contact has been with New York City and New York State officials. The president spoken to the mayor. What kind of assistance has the White House offered? What has York City asked for, and do you know why the NYPD has already said time this isn't being investigated as terror? Well, the investigation is going to happen and be overseen by local New York authorities. The New York Police Terrorism Unit is working with TF, TF, the FBI, TF to investigate. So certainly we would assist in every appropriate way uh, through this channel. Um, as we noted earlier this morning, not only briefed on latest developments, but White House senior staff are in touch with Mayor Adam, the police commissioner, and we've offered we can provide. I just spoke again with the president about but earlier on the plane, and he reiterated that is his, uh, his request of the team. Anything they need, anything they want, we are here to help them and, and provide that to them. Uh, it's not yet had a call. Uh, if that happens today, I will provide that uh, information to all of you. Do you know why they've said that this is not I'm being investigated as terror if this investigation is so preliminary while well, we've ruled that out. To them, they're overseeing the investigation. Do you think we might hear from the president on this on this matter today? I don't have a prediction of that on time, but if there are updates to provide from our end, I'll let you all know.
follow up on uh, uh, the use of possible weapons or poisonous gas in, in Russia, would our response be if that is verified? How long might it take to verify that? Well, I'm not about hypotheticals. We don't have confirmation of the use. Uh, and uh, so I'm not going to speculate on hypotheticals at this point. I will note that it is difficult to, um, to get the data and information that you need like this. We don't have, uh, we don't have um, a team on the ground, obviously. I would note that um, we did have critical, credible information before today. may use a variety of riot control agents, including tear gas, agents that would cause stronger symptoms in order to weaken and incapacitate Ukrainian fighters and civilians as part of its aggressive campaign in Mariupol. Uh, we shared that information with the Ukrainians at the time. We'll continue to share up to date gathering information, but at this point in time, we have no confirmation, so I'm going to get ahead of that process. And one more about now, I understand there's advice to going out to Americans, a recommendation not to China right now because of zero COVID policy, possibility of parents from their children, which we know is happening obviously now in China. Do we have any evidence or any of that happening to American citizens right now who are in China? The State Department, uh, they provide uh, that type of guidance and information to uh, the American people wherever they are in the world. They do it out of an abundance of caution and to make sure they're as transparent as possible about what they're seeing on the ground in countries to Shanghai, not all of China. Jen, on, on, back on CPI, you said yesterday you don't expect most people to dive beyond headline inflation. This is the White House that people are going to see that eight sort of roll back their spending and then drive us into a recession? Well, I would also say that core CPI did go down this month. I don't want to over that that is certainly also data we look at. And we noted that our expectation on CPI so that the American people, through all of you, and whatever way you chose to report it, and we expected it to be elevated because of and because of the impact on energy prices, which there's experiencing every day. So I don't have a projection on consumer spending at this point in time. Obviously, it's taken by economists, but uh, we wanted to provide as much as we could assess about what we thought the data would show based on what people are experiencing when they go to the gas pumps. And then back on the thing, I'm wondering if you guys have an of how successful these DOJ strikes have been, specifically to be the number of how many illegally they've taken off the streets in those five major metro Great question. I I'm, I'm, can see if we can get an update from the department who obviously oversees the strike forces in terms of successes have been. I know we've uh, provided a little bit in the past, but I don't have that information. So let me get that to you after the break. Uh, from Ukraine, please. Um, the administration many times that uh, it would help Ukraine investigate uh, war crimes. Yeah. Can you maybe detail how is that happening without having prison? Is it maybe planned at some stage to send U.S. personnel to collect, for example, collect evidence and to assist Ukrainian forces? Sure. Uh, well, I don't have any updates on that last particular part of your question. What I can tell you is that there are a couple of ways that uh, historic participated in investigations, and we case uh, some of that is intel gathering and sharing partners and allies around the world who are also uh, contributing to investigations. Some of that is um, through those diplomatic of course. Some of that is reporting of, uh, frankly, the media and reports who are in Ukraine on the ground who sometimes uh, they're the type of data necessarily I'm talking about, but often do provide pictures and visuals. Uh, and there is, of course, a range of means we have to, uh, to work to gather information. But I, I can't detail more. And the last one on the French election. I know you won't comment on the hour. Is the administration monitoring the process for interference and have you seen signs of it? Uh, I don't have an assessment of it, uh, but I think we've seen uh, the interference in elections throughout the course of recent history before then, whether it's here or in So certainly we anticipate that that could be possible, but I don't have any confirmation of it at this point in time. What, what is the president's position for Iowa should have the first in the nation presidential contest in 24? Uh, there is a uh, being overseen by the DNC that it will play out over the course of the coming um, and we certainly respect and support that process. On the French election, are the concerned with 
in the White House that if President Macron is not reelected, that it could sort of become an issue in the in the to keep European sort of and cross Atlantic unity uh, in the face of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Well, um, unity is obviously very important to us. Maybe the most used word in description of our efforts and our strategy here. Uh, but as you know, the runoff election is not for a week and a half, uh, so we're just not going to get ahead of that. Delphi is the first major city to reinstate an indoor mask mandate with this current surge. Do you guys expect other cities to follow suit? Uh, what would it take for the White House to reinstate that mandate on campus as well? It would take the D.C. recommending that. I would remind you that what uh, every state and city is going to make evaluations and their own assessments, what they need to do to keep communities safe. What we are is the CDC guidance, which has, has red and yellow. It even impacts yellow green, I should say. It impacts where the president wears masks, where we wear masks. And obviously, if we go to an ended, we will continue to do that. Um, you know, right now, first requirements on in transit, but uh, the president won't be wearing a mask. Philadelphia taking this step prematurely, House's view? It's been our view that uh, cities and local can take and should take steps that uh, they keep their community safe. Can I ask you one more about ethanol? Um, this is a, it wasn't an emergency suspension, but this is something the administration did. They, they uh, allowed year-round sales of E15. It was, it was overturned by federal. So I, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, the politics of this, this is supported by several Midwestern Republican senators in the, you know, in the Senate. So is there any fear that the Democratic base might be a little bit disillusioned by doing something that has been supported or against was done by the Trump administration, even given the, the uh, circumstances with the crisis? I, I think our view um, is that um, people, uh, the American people are going to gas in their tanks or their cars country, including across the Midwest, where many of these 20 pumps are where, that have E15, uh, the E15 gasoline option, if they can pay 10 cents less a gallon, then they'll do that. I'm not sure they're looking at that through a political lens. One more question. Um, given the consistently high numbers we keep seeing and Shanghai being in lockdown, zero COVID, Russia's war, I know you're saying that the Fed is in end of year, things will ease, but how certain can we really be? Uncertainties and these long, you know, COVID zero and the and Russia's war, it, it could last longer, right? And and would the president and would the obviously the Fed is is separate, but would he then want to not see an increase in interest rates, an increase in, in what the Fed is already planning for the rest of the year? Noted is independent um, and have predicted or conveyed publicly that they calibrate. We support that pivot. And we support their dependence and their uh, their their uh, you know ability to make decisions about interest rate, and other uh, other uh, other policies around inflation. What I will say though is that how the American people experience inflation, rising costs, right, in a variety of areas, right? They, they experience it at the gas pump. They experience it when they go to the grocery store. They experience it when things cost more, whether it's childcare or taking care of their grandparents. That's why we've been so aggressive in pushing for the president's agenda that would lower those costs because they would have a huge impact uh, on the American people. Um, and we feel that's a solution. If Republicans have an alternative to it, we welcome that, but that is a way we could cut costs. Otherwise, to go back to your original question, uh, we certainly uh, respect the independence of the Federal Reserve and uh, support their uh, public intention of recalibrating. Stick it up.